Hey everyone, um, before I get started in this video, I wanted to just promote someone who makes NBCI videos and has some interesting thoughts and is a pretty smart guy. It's talking with famous people. I'll put a bubble probably over here. And um, I just encourage you guys to go and watch his videos because he doesn't have the views that he deserves um, for the, just the quality of what he makes. Uh, however, this video was re um, requested by Bleeding Face and he just asked me to make a video off of ENTPs and love and how that how that works with love um, he described it as that it was to him it was or her it sounds like a he but I may if I'm wrong then you know just might be insulting <laughs> um, but he or she said that it was more of a like a chemical reaction you know just like that kind of feelings um, and also asked about how, whether we were the type to get married or could change lifestyles quickly. Um, just didn't want to put in the effort and the commitment. And uh, that was kind of like a, like a, oh, like, I have to think on that for a moment kind of question. Because um, I think, it just, it's not, I don't know how, like, I think each types are going to have similarities, but at the same time they're going to differ while at the same time all humans are going to be the same in some aspects and so it's really like I don't know I don't know if I have enough experience with other people and their descriptions on what to say is um, ENTP and not related to that but I can give my experiences and um, kind of a response to that kind of I have some comments on just related to ENTP and so um, my first I guess like Okay, so this video, this is like my third try of taking it. It was a little harder to for me to explain in words, and I had to think through it a lot more, which is great. I like thinking through things and things that challenge me, so um, that's been good. And I finally resorted to making a uh, outline. I know, insanity, right? So. Um, Maybe this will be, be a little more structured than my other videos. Probably not. I don't. I doubt that I won't go off on a ramble. Not to mention I'm. I just finished doing a bunch of work and I'm t more tired, which will make my rambles more likely. So I apologize in advance, but <laughs> oh well. Um. So he mentioned that he thought the ENTP that commented thought saw love as like just a chemical thing in your brain so like just emotions not a big deal um sorry my cat wants inside <laughs> um but uh you want to see my kitty here no cat here you can see my cat <laughs> not happy about this Okay, bye-bye. Um, anyhow, so cats are distracting. Uh, anyhow, they, just the emotions aspect of things, um, I, I agree with that in a way. Um, you definitely do have that whole in love, that lots of emotions, the infatuation, the kind of things you would read in, like, sappy romance novels or whatever, whatever, so... Um, that definitely is that. And, um, I don't rely on it much. I, um, it's, yeah, to me, like, I have to process through emotions and such, and I couldn't just take them and rely on them. I treat it, like, the same way I treat fear. Fear is an advisor. It's something my brain has developed to protect me from dying. And so, I naturally listen to that, but I don't necessarily follow it like it's my god. Um, I'm not like, oh my gosh, I'm afraid of something, I can't do that anymore. I think, why am I afraid of it? Okay, I'm afraid of it because of these reasons. Like, for example, there's a massive spider. I think, wow, that's creepy and disturbing. And then I think, okay, well, it's not poisonous, I already know that. Like, for example, daddy long leg. Those are creepy to me, but they're not deadly. They can't hurt me at all. 
so there's no need to freak out about them. And so that's kind of the same way I view, like, the infatuation kind of thing. Like, or just the being in love with someone. Like, it's, yeah, it's lots of emotions. They make me feel happy. They give me all these reactions or whatever, just, and I, I enjoy hanging around that person. And I'm content with that most of them. Like, I just like being around the person. I like getting to know them better. And so, um, I, I'm just, that's, <laughs> no, 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 don't, okay. Um, all right. <laughs> um, I'm making sure he doesn't break anything. <laughs> yeah, batting at it would break it. <laughs> I'm not sure what he's doing. He's like really fascinated with the dust that's collected on my shelf or something. Um, anyhow, so yes, I don't find it reliable and however I would follow it. I would befriend the person, but I wouldn't build a relationship based off of it. Whereas an ESFB, for example, might just jump into the relationship because they felt, they, they just were drawn that way by their emotions. Which just, that's, they have a different outlook on things. Um, and that's a fine way to look at things too. It's just how my personality works. I... And actually, this is how I differ. This is the point where I kind of differ from, I think, the most ENTPs. I may be wrong, but from what I understand, I just, I like long-term things. I like, when I'm going to invest my time and energy into something, um, you're going outside. Go on. Go. Um, when I invest my time and energy into something, I want it to be permanent and that's something that's really hard with me with making friends with people because I don't want to befriend them because I just don't think it'll last and I don't think that's the right outlook to have because I'm ter learning to live in the moment more to enjoy things while they work they're here and not worry if they don't aren't there forever um, but that's just how with regarding like just the emotions of being in love with that I can enjoy them being friends with the person but not build a relationship off of with them when I don't know whether or not I'm going to break up with them because for all I know I get into a relationship with them the feelings fade away and then I realize oh wait this isn't where I want to be and then I have to break their heart and that's not something that I would want to do and so I mean I can't imagine anyone would want to do that uh, so like, in that way I do agree with him and that that's really all it is. It's my brain telling me that, hey, this person's probably a good idea, and, or maybe not a good idea, but there's, um, there's, a uh, my brain is picking up that we're compatible or that that would just make good mate for whatever reason. Uh, so I don't base anything off of that. However, I don't think that's the only love in romantic kind of relationships that there is. I think that after you get, and I say I think because I may be confusing this with, I don't know, I just, I guess I haven't cemented the idea well enough yet and thought it through enough, but I'm like 90% sure, 80% sure that there's a love past that, that doesn't isn't this emotional roller coaster and it's that that other kind of language that infatuation is emotional roller coaster and it's exhilarating and um, it's fun and adventurous and then it kind of tapers off and when that happens people are like what's going on like I loved that person and now I don't and so they they just get confused by that and I think that with getting as you get to know the person. And, um, as you learn to trust them, then you have another, another kind of love that's built. The infatuation is more self-centered. Not in a bad way. Self-centered is usually a negative, has a negative connotation, and I don't mean it that way. Because it's not a bad thing. It's just feelings. It's not, 
I mean, they're probably good feelings, but it's, he makes me feel this way, he makes me feel this way, he makes me feel this way, just all kinds of stuff like that, and it's very much how happy and excited he makes you feel, or she, or whatever gender you are, um, but there's a kind of love that's the opposite. It's, I want to make him or her feel this way. I want to make him or her smile. Just because you have that connection with them. Just because you love them. It, not because when they smile it gives you butterflies. Um, or it just makes you happy. It's not about you. And so, um, this one's a lot harder for me to explain. And I tried explaining it the past two times I took this video and had a hard time both times. Uh, I, I wrote down a few things in my little outline. And um, I think just the best way to explain it is just that it's selfless. Um, before I go into more details, it's, and it's something I can rely on. Now, I wouldn't get it in a relationship with someone simply because... I loved them or even if I just really liked them I could explore that possibility and I would explore that possibility and I have explored that possibility uh, but I wouldn't jump into a relationship off of any kinds of feelings I would have to determine is this gonna be long term and I guess that's me being more NT than I am a P or something like because I don't think most ENTPs would see it that way and I'll get into that later um, but like, it's just, so, but I, I already went over that, it's, I just, I, so I wouldn't rely on this necessarily, only, but it is something that I found develops after the infatuation period, as you get to know the person, and you grow to love who they are, and not just the little bits you know off of them, in fact, the kind of infatuation love can be the whole L like, the love at first sight thing, I totally believe in. Because, sure, you can have a, this emotional connection to someone who you think, who your brain somehow, in its magical way, it does this. I don't even know how it does this. It's really amazing. Um, it just picks up that, hey, there's compatibility here, there's chemistry here. And then you fall in love with them at first sight. But this is a different kind of love. This is... This is something that can ha that happens after you get to know the person. You, it's more than just feelings. It's, it's um. I I don't know. You have you. Because, it's not blind, necessarily. It's. I love who that person is, um, and. It's just different. Um, it's some. It's the kind of love that, if put in the effort and the work, then it can last your lifetime. Uh, and it's not the same kind of fireworks. It's more stable. It's like the difference between an F and a T. Don't take that seriously. I'm just. I'm making, just throwing out things. But it's kind of like that. It reminds me of that a little bit. Um, it's, um, you make, it makes you feel comfortable with the person, like you can trust them. I found that, and it was the strangest thing to me, I just, with that kind of love, you feel like the person's, like, home. It feels like the person's home. And when you're around them, it's like, you never realize that, I'm gonna get, like, super sappy here. Um, you know, it's like you never realized that you weren't home, and then you're there with the person, and it's just like you can breathe. It's just relaxing, and it's uh, that's at least for me. I consider it relaxing. Other people might have different ways to describe it, but um, it's so. But um, yeah, it's. Um, I never really understood until I actually experienced it the whole, and in fact I thought they were just being like overdramatic the whole like, 
having your other half and stuff. But I kind of understand that now, and I think I relate it most to just that kind of feeling of being home with someone. And uh, it's not, it's not, I don't feel like it's just the chemical response in your brain, that kind of love, because it takes work. Um, you have to invest in the person. You have to learn to be vulnerable. At least, that's, like, these are the things that I have to learn to do as my personality. I have to learn to be vulnerable with the person. I have to um, put time and effort into it. It's not something that I can't control. It's something that I could lose if I don't decide this is what I want. If I don't decide that I, I want that person and I want to commit to it, then I can lose that. And, um, cat's here again. Just ignore him. Um, as a, now, this is mostly from a girl's perspective, um, but as a girl, something that surprised me about this kind of love, another thing that I learned about it, like, is that, um, as an ENTP, and I think most TP girls, and some of the TJ types, are, we are pretty independent, especially the TPs, I think. Um, just in general, we tend to be more independent people. I uh, have always considered, always considered myself independent. I'm, I'm one of the more independent girls that I know. Probably the most independent girl I know, if I think about it. Yeah. Um, at least from my perspective. Who knows? I'm slightly biased because I'm in my head and I'm not looking out on it, whereas I'm looking out on everyone else, so I might have a biased perspective. But anyhow, that's just the who I am. And so, I was really surprised, because I didn't expect this, but I wanted to rely on the other person. And relying on people is not easy for me. And it's not usually something I want to do. So that was really weird for me. Um, to just want to rely and trust on trust the person. Uh, and feeling happy when I do. Um, so that was really surprising. Uh... So yeah, it's just, so I don't, so my point in it is that, um, is that I do think some kinds of love, there are some kinds of love that's just chemicals in your brain, like freaking out. Um, then there's another kind that you build yourself. And so that's kind of my main point with all this, is just like elaborating on the two types that I've seen, is just that I feel like it's not all just emotions. And I think that makes sense. Uh, just the, the way the world works. Um, things are often designed for different personalities. There's going to be T parts to love and there's going to be F parts to love. Because we've all, we've all got an F part of ourselves and a T part of ourselves. And, and everyone has one higher than the other. But we've still got... F still have a T part of themselves and they still have an F part... He's opening the window! He opened the window! I've got a smart cat, really. It's like ENTP cat. <laughs> yes, I know you can't type animals, but I don't know. Oh, don't climb on the screen, you stupid animal. Okay. Um. Anyhow. Uh. <laughs> um. So yeah. So that's kind of my point. It's just that to me, it's not all emotions, but I tend to review myself. So. Um, the, th the second thing brought up in the request was on marriage. Could, do ENTPs in general, what, are they the types that would get married? It dep depends. It's hard to group any type into this kind of question. Because MBTI can go only go so far. However, it can give you a general idea of where... Th I can give you a general idea of where ENTPs in general would stand on this, just given their personality types and what they would lean towards. But every ENTP is going to be unique and etc. Um, and and all that. Uh, as for myself, I can I can look at I'm going to look at two perspectives: just myself and other ENTPs, and with this kind of personality type. So I guess I'll start with others first, because um, that makes more sense to me. So. 
just looking at the personality type of an ENTP, young ENTPs I can see being less likely to get married. So like I can see ENTPs getting married when they're older but not younger. Because and I can totally relate to this, but not like I can relate to it. And I think I would be this way if I didn't have the views that I have and if I wasn't so obsessed with things being permanent and stuff. Um just I think that they would get obsessed with the excitement, not obsessed in a bad way, just just they would want to ex experiment and explore. You've got before you a world with tons of people in it and an ENTP would probably feel like they were missing out if they didn't like it, they would probably be really into dating because they would feel like they were missing out if they took one person and stuck with them forever. Like or if they got married young and then they would just they would get restless um, because they want to explore new things. They want to explore new people, especially people who are interested in personality types, um, which are going to be probably everyone watching this video, is just they want to explore. They want to um, see different people. Uh, everyone's going to have a different personality and romance, and um, they want to explore all of the different types and all the different kinds of people, and every person is unique, and so it's kind of exciting, the idea of exploring all the different people, and um, so I, I don't think they're likely to get into serious relationships when they're young, because they just want to explore. When they get older, I think that they would uh, become more concerned with like I feel, I think suddenly they would develop the they they would get over the excitement and the exploration, and say okay I want to settle down now like and they would find they would probably find someone and be like oh yeah that's the person I want, um, or just meet someone who's just like w above and beyond everyone else they've met or whatever, so that's pretty much the way I see it with the majority of ENTPs, um, and of course everyone's gonna be different but. If you're just speaking with ENTPs in general, which is hard to do with this kind of question, but we do tend to be a lot more independent and a lot hard. It's harder for us to do commitments. Like I, like I, I think I mentioned, I'm really big on long term and permanent things. I hate investing in something that's not permanent. But I do have that part of me that's really has a difficult time with commitments, and I'll go through phases where I just don't care. Um, but I do things purposely to keep myself committed. And, um, uh, as for me, as an ENTP, whether or not I do marriage, definitely yes. However, there's certain as like aspects of myself that differs myself from other ENTPs or the majority. And, um, so, hold on, I'm gonna open the door. Okay, I'm back, and I gotta check in, because it's freezing. Because I've got my window open, because I'm an idiot. And it's not that cold where I live. Um, <laughs> well, it's cold, but not cold to the rest of the world. Uh, so, for me, and, so like, this is just me personally, I differ in that in my religion and the fact that I I don't like things where I'm not committing for life and I have that issue uh, so with to me marriage isn't just a legal binding it has more uh, aspects to it and it has a lot to do with my uh, with my faith and such um, so yeah, it's, to me it's like when I'm with someone in marriage then it's a partner in my faith and as I'm walking in that. So that's to me it's different um, than to maybe the, the average ENTP just because I have that, that aspect and I think that if I weren't, if I didn't have that, that leaning and that guidance in, in uh, and all that, then I probably would actually be, which is probably why I say that the majority of ENTPs would be the way that I explained earlier. I'd probably be like the majority of ENTPs, just um, 
willing to, I would probably jump between, I want something permanent, and I want to explore. And so I'd be like, eh, and I'd probably like flop between those and I'd be a mess. Um, because I would, I would just have times where I was like, no, I want to stick with someone, and then I'd be like, no, I don't want to stick with you. And, <laughs> um, just with that aspect of myself. But with, uh, having, just with my religion, I, I do, like, it's a definite, yeah. Like, marriage, yeah, definitely for me. Um, and I've never considered it otherwise in, in all my life. I've always known that I was eventually going to get married. Uh, and it, it adds a little le more level of commitment because, yeah, it's hard to explain, um, to, uh, when I'm trying, I'm voicing to the general crowd and, uh, but I have a lot of, um, uh, reasoning related to my religion and God and I can explain that more if people want me to in the comments, but, and just feel free to ask, I'll answer a, a lot of anything, but that really influences me, so that does set me apart a little bit from, um, some other people, and, uh, those are my main reasonings, is just, I want something permanent, and I see marriage as, like, not just, like, a partner in my faith, but also, a partner in life so like whatever job I'm gonna have or wherever I'm gonna go whatever my ambitions are I'm kind of fo focused a lot on like ambitions and such um, I have a partner in that and I feel like that's a really useful thing to have just have someone who supports you and um, who you can go through things with, through things with and uh, just that like partner in life and um, someone who's been with you for a long time and so that's how I feel about, like, marriage and stuff. And, um, other ENTPs are going to be different. Every ENTP is going to be different. Every ENTP is going to have a history behind them that determines their reasoning. Like, if I grew up in a really torn household and saw, it, like, if my parents were divorced and they really struggled and there was a lot of bad things that happened then I probably had a lot different point of view. So, like, your history determines that answer, and, um, and like, your religious affinity determines that answer, because for some, pe for some people, like, marriage is very religious-oriented, and some people it's very, it's a lot different of, like, more, like, legal-based or, or whatnot. And so for some people it's, and this is, can't imagine would be too many ENTPs, but it's very love-based. And so... It just it really depends on the person. You can't group all the ENTPs into one answer to this question, which is why when I saw the marriage thing, I was like, uh, there's a lot of things I could say on that. Um, but that's pretty much, like, the gist of how I feel about pretty much everything. Given that that's, this is, like, 27 minutes long, it pretty much gives you a rounded answer. See, even when I did an outline, it ended up being long and probably rambly. It's just, there's no help for me. Um, uh, so, but yeah, and I hope that gives you a rounded answer on all of everything that I talked about. And, uh, thanks for watching.